Hello, children. Welcome to Read That Book. Today, I will be giving you a taste of one of my all-time favorite books, which is Kurumi by Ola Rotemi of Blessed Memory. Ola Rotemi was a great writer who died in the year 2000. However, his work is still living with us. Great authors like this deserve so much respect. So let's just observe five second silence in his honor, shall we? May his soul rest in peace. All right, great. Okay, now since Corona is a play, I will not just be reading it, I will be acting it, which explains why I'm dressed the way I am. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? Yay, great. Okay, now when we're done with this video, I need you to ensure you get the book and read it. It's available in many bookshops around the nation. However, you could just drop a comment in the comment box if you need directions and then I'll ensure to get back to you. Right, but before we proceed into the book, let's go over some basics. First of all, if you take a look at the cover of the book, if you take a look at the cover of the book, you will notice that it is a three crown book. Now, hold on, I'm not referring to this product, <laughs> Three Crowns Milk by Priceland Campina. How, no, 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 no. However, Three Crown is an imprint, or pardon me, was an imprint of the Oxford University Press. That's the publishing company that made the book. Okay, um, am I being too technical with you right now? So let me break it down for you. Think of imprint as classroom, as a classroom in a big school. Exactly. So you would expect that the kind of books that a year two child should read would be different from what you'd expect a year seven child to read. So that's pretty much it. Imprints are just like classrooms of different categories in a large publishing company. And that's exactly where Three Crown Book belongs or rather belonged in the Oxford University Press, okay? So now that you have that, I'm very sure you got that. Did you get that? Good, if you got that, awesome, fantastic, bravo, proud of you, splendid. Okay, so now let me tell you something that I realize about this book. Whenever I think about the book currently, I think of a quote by Theodore Roosevelt, which says, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. So this book does expose something vital about our past, okay, especially as a nation of people rich in culture and tradition. One of such tradition is that of the constitution of the old Oya Empire requiring that the crown prince commits suicide upon the death of his father, the Alafi. Now, doesn't that sound unfair? Why exactly should the son be required to die upon the death of his father? Strange things, doesn't it? Okay, so let's move on. However, in 1858, the then Alaf Nyatiba sought to make his son king, contrary to the constitution. Some leaders welcomed this idea, saying that the tradition needs to change since times change, but for me, a major leader and warlord of the empire opposed this decision, thus starting a war. Are you ready? Okay, so let's begin. Scene one. The play opens on Kurumi's Aguli, the closest English term for which is compound. Even this term falls miserably short in portraying the sacred pictorial essence of what an Agoli really is. In this particular Agoli, for instance, the gods of the tribe are present in varying images of earth, granite, and wood. Here also exist, or are believed to exist, the spirits of departed ancestors, ethereal, invisible, eternal guardians of the bodies of the living, bodies that have warmth and blood and sweat. Aboli. Enter Abogarin, 
rattling a small boy as he approaches the shrine of the, the god of iron in the center of the compound. He stands before the shrine, pouring libation in it from a keg of palm wine in his other hand. Termites dwell on the ground. Termites dwell on the ground. Oh, move God of vengeance. Hear my prayer. Termites dwell on the ground. He who plots evil against Koromi, Lord of this land of Ijae. Oh, move, let the earth burst open. Burst open and swallow up his body like a termite. May he dwell forever on the ground. Dun -dun. Drumming hills are Bulgarian's presence. He dances briefly. <laughs> then raises a hand. Drumming stops. He lifts the keg to his lips. Sucks the remaining palm wine to the last drop. Mm. Breaks out in contentment. <sighs> and stares defensively at someone in the audience. He addresses this spectator directly. Why do you stare at me that way? Did you see me drink yesterday? Will I be drunk tomorrow? Hands up. Is today not the day set aside by our leader, Konrome, to feast all the children of Jai? Why then must I am Bogori, not eat and drink. Today, the feast of Aurora and A crowd of the Jaya town folk lugging palm white gods and calabashes burst into view, dancing, singing to drumbeats. Oba ya la Oba ya la ya wa, awon ton pe wa, lo mo e mu. Oba ya la ya wa, kiti kati ni ju, kiti 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 kiti. An elderly man ambles self-assuredly toward the crowd. Balagun agun karaju. Quiet, sit down, quiet, everybody. The old one speaks. Speak on, elder one. Let's hear wisdom. Take the elders away and the town rots. Quiet, people. Let the man speak. Uh -huh. Quiet. Uh, I know nothing about the mother of the gorilla. But I can tell you something about the father of the ape. Those born to lead a few, those born to follow many. Kai, who says we have no leader? Kai, we have a leader. I said, who says we have no leader? Kai, we have a leader. Who then is our leader? Kurumi is our leader. Drum. <laughs> The dancing and drumming stop. Everybody prostrates himself in ready deference to Kurumi's entrance. Karomi storms in, closely followed by his five sons, stops abruptly, surveys the crowd, then stares fixedly ahead of him. The crowd rises to kneeling position. Karomi is still staring. On the standing on the same spot, staring ahead absently. The crowd glares back at him, puzzled. At last, Kurumi speaks. The Gabon Viper. When the Gabon Viper dies, its children take up its habits, poison and all. The plantain dies, its saplings take its place, broad leaves and all. 
fire dies, its ashes bear its memory with a shroud of white fluff. That is the meaning of tradition. He crosses towards stool, stops again, and stops again halfway there. My people, we too have tradition. This is what makes us men. This is what makes us people distinct from mud. Why? The pride of bees is in the honeycomb. The pride of the wither bird shows in the skillful design of its nest. And where stands the pride of the monkey? Is it not in his knowledge of the secrets on the tree tops? The pride of man, my people, is in his tradition. Something to learn from for the peace of his present. Something to learn from for the advance of his tomorrow. The day the tall Iroko tree loses its roots is the day the baby ant shits on its head. The day a people lose their tradition is the day their death begins. Means they become the climbers, seaweeds floating. They know not where to do. My people, I greet you today, the Feast of Aurora. And uh, we, my sons here and I, we have just come back from a meeting with Alafia to buy in Oyo. Onifa oh, was present. Simiede was sitting next to him. Basharoli of Ibadan on my left. We were all seated. Obatiba came down from his high throne. In his right hand, the sword of Ogun. In his left hand, the bolt of Shango. He came toward us. Swear, my people, said he. Swear to Ogun and to my forebear, Shango, that my son Adil will be king after me. Clown, I yelled, out of my cursed sight. I shall be no party to perversion and disgrace. Picked up my stuff and walked out. Let Adelu be what? The next king of our race, Allah, <laughs> you When the tortoise is heading for a senseless journey, and you say to him, brother tortoise, brother tortoise, when will you be wise and come back home? The tortoise will say, brother, not until I have been disgraced. Not until I have been disgraced. Not until I have been disgraced, disgraced, disgraced. Not until I have been disgraced. What did they say? The others, see me and Basharoli Ole, they spoke the words of the corrupt in the face of truth. What? Nothing. Ah. When the tortoise is heading for a senseless journey. My Lord, the elders are here to see you. What elders? See me and Basharoli Ole, I don't want to see. Enter the nobles, Timiede and Basho Leoli. He stops short in his trucks, turns around, and stares disdainfully at the visitors who are now surveying the crowd about them, feeling very embarrassed by the silent reception they are getting. Have we fallen so low in the eyes of your subject that even slaves among them now feel too noble to prostrate themselves in respect for our presence? I will have no one call my slaves slaves. There are no slaves in Ijaye. Every man, every woman, every child in Ijaye is going to miss child. It, it is well. Now to your first question. Indeed, lo, you have fallen. Does the aged he goat have to be told that his present long beard is no more proof of strength? A king, a ruler who sees truth but is too weak 
so cowardly to uphold truth, that ruler has fallen low, lower than the most depressed slave in our bushland. We thank you. Now, frustrate yourselves to them. No use. Bring them chairs. No need. Move back for them. Don't bother. Go hang. Kurome, son of a CLA, you insult me. We must be patient, my brother. First, Kurome, we want you to understand that we have not come to beg you about Adenu being king after his father. We have come to warn you that as our Onokakanfo, chief warrior of our kingdom, you must do nothing rash against the kingdom. Yours is the sacred duty to protect and fight for our people and not to confound and rip them apart, rip the kingdom apart. Tell that to yourself. Go tell Onife and then go plead with Allah Atiba. You are the only important chief in the kingdom who opposes the Alafin's wish. We have a tradition. Whenever an Alafin dies, his first son, that Alafin's first son must also die with him. Is that not part of our tradition? Or am I sick in the head? It is so, but that is all. Atiba dies this evening. His first son, Aden, who dies by midnight, we bury them both. Everybody is happy. But Kurami, my brother, you seem to forget that there has been no exception to the rule. And wealthy Atiba can't now corrupt us to grant him a special favor. Atiba dies, Adenu, whoa. You forget that time passes and the ways of men must change with time. We have a tradition and tradition is tradition. Time may pass, but the laws of our fathers tested and hallowed by the ways of men live on. That is tradition. Tradition adapts to what? To times, whose times? Life's times, your idea, life's truth, the rubbish. We are human and so, we change. Welcome. Tradition must change with man. Go give your shoes to your slaves. Why? Times change. Very well then. We are sworn to make Adelu king, and king he must be. Not over my people. Ijaye is part of Atiba's kingdom. You are chief of Ijaye today because Atiba, Allah, me Atiba, the supreme head of the kingdom, made you so. I thank Atiba. Adilu is his son, and once Adilu is king, he will be your king. Over my dead body. Let's go, my brother. The cow defecates and thinks she is soiling the pasture. We shall see whose buttock gets soiled first. Come, my brother. They leave. Go! Tell the world. Romy will never prostrate himself to shoot a deer with the father one morning and then squat with the son in the evening to, to shoot a goose. Never. Never. I say never. Father, what happened? Man the gate. Dry, dry, dry sword. Get close. Father, what is the matter? My son, Adele will be king. What? what? What was that? Some joke must be. Why? Why a joke? Dare you take me lightly? I say Adele will be king. Father has agreed to that. They say Adele wants to be king. But, but father, <laughs> so let Adelu be king. The gods forbid a cow. <laughs> a cow is about to be shipped to white man's land. And she's happy. <laughs> Very happy. Uh, let the cow go. When she gets to white man's land, what will she become? Corned beef. <laughs>